one fight night 21 uh amazon prime if you're in north america this was uh region urso versus uh alexis nicolas awesome Doggy. so hey for anybody that's just joining us welcome to story of the fight and this is my boy will my name's romero uh cover all things mixed martial arts and now we're going to be covering fight night 21 fight night 21 make sure you like it all right time. let's get into yes it. please do please do let's get into it uh urso versus nicolas bro Irsul, the immortal. I mean, he's been on such a crazy run. He's so good at striking. Like, he's just so fucking good. Uh, he's been the king for a long time now, for one. Look at that belt, uh, by the way. Yeah, Beautiful. 26 pounds, dude. Holy. Beautiful. I yeah, love it. Really good belt. Um, and Alexis Nicholas also on a streak of his own. Um, a lot of people going into this thought this is just an Irsul. This is going to be an Irsul showcase. Um, myself included. I thought I... I to be honest, I didn't give Nicholas most much of a chance in this one. I thought Irsul was going to take this one. Um, but Irsul has always struggled with leg kicks. And it's never really mattered mm. uh, as far as the outcome of the fight goes. But this first, uh, oh, also the walkout with the Immortal Mask from 300 to fit the nickname, the Immortal. I mean, so fucking cool, dude. It's, it's so, so good, so yeah. Cool. Genevieve says, so many fights this weekend. Too many fights. Glad we decided to skip PFL on Thursday. I wish I did. Um, <laughs> I should have made that decision. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. Speaking of that, we had UFC, we had PFL, we had one. I think one very clearly was the winner this weekend. If you're comparing everything, 100%. they killed it. They really killed. It. They delivered. Dude, when I find myself watching a fight and I'm smiling, yeah, like just uh, how can I say? like appreciative mm -hmm. of what I'm watching and the skill yeah, yeah. set. And the competitiveness, like I, I know I'm watching some damn good fights, man. And yeah. watching Friday, uh, Friday fights, watching uh, uh, 21, like it, it just, I had a smile on my face most of the time. It was fun, dude. It was they were, it, they did a good job. Oh, uh, sure. So did Nicholas, huh? Nicholas opens up the first round, heavy leg kicks. That he's uh, French, right? But he that Dutch kickboxing low kick style, very good against someone like Irsol because is so long. Um, and he, he doesn't really, um, he doesn't really like block or, uh, he doesn't like address leg kicks very much in his fights. He just kind of eats them and it's like, I'm fine with it. But the reality is it's scoring points, whether it's mm -hmm. going to affect you long-term or not, it's still scoring points. And in a kickboxing match, uh, let's leave the picture here, Rich, um, in a kickboxing match, you know, those leg kicks score points. And they add up, man. Kickboxing, if you don't get the finish, the scorecards are very important in kickboxing. And things can affect those. Some things weigh more than others. And kicks definitely weigh. Um, and we'll talk about that when we cover Friday fights. But, um, you know, that first round, Nicholas doing a very good job with his low kicks. Uh, and the second round, Irsul starts turning it up a little bit. He's one of those guys that he's like an avalanche, right? Where he once he gets started, it just builds, it builds, it snowballs. His volume is crazy. His aggression is crazy. Um, but that second round was pretty close. It was starting. To, it was. It, I thought. I thought Nicholas took the first round. Um, I thought Yusuf maybe took that round off. He got lit up a little bit with the leg kicks. Great point scoring, point fighting from uh, Nicholas in that first round. Second round, they started trading a little bit more with the hands. Um, and Yusuf, I think, got careless a little bit, and he's this big right hand that drops him because he came yep. in a little reckless. Yeah, that's exactly what I have in my notes. Reckless yeah. approach. Yeah, uh, Anonymous says Irsul probably would have scraped a decision victory if he didn't get knocked down, and we will definitely get into that um, because that knockdown is big. That's a 10-8 round for Nicholas, regardless if if Irsul was uh, starting to land more in that in that round, which he was. Third, fourth, and fifth, Irsul's coming on strong, coming on real strong. And, and you can see there's some guys who just have weaponized cardio, right? They can mm -hmm. weaponize their cardio, and that's Irsul. Um, he doesn't, he, he's never sat in between rounds. He always stands in between rounds. Uh, the guy's an animal. He's a straight up machine. And you could see as the fight progressed, Nicholas starts, his hands are going lower. He's not, he's not getting behind that shoulder yeah. as well. Uh, he's not blocking as well. And you starting to land these hooks, dude, that chin on Nicholas, dude, he ate some hooks in this fight. Yeah. Um, and we've seen Irsul with that death touch, right? Was it against Menchikov recently where he, he just barely grazed him and knocked him out? Um, but how did you score it? Did you think 
the way I saw it, close first round, Nicholas edged it. Second round, the knockdown, automatic 10-8. Three, four, and five, I thought Irsil poured it on him pretty well and, and won those three rounds comfortably. I saw some people say the fifth was close. Um, what did you think? No, I gave it to Nicholas, especially after that knockdown and giving that 10-8. Um, mm-hmm. Dude, and I was super impressed. Look, for me, since I've started watching one, I'm not the biggest fan of just the regular kickboxing. Mm-hmm. Muay Thai with the four-ounce gloves, all day, every day. Sign That's me up, dude. Take my money. That's my jam. I absolutely love it. But watching these guys last night, I was like, man, this is so high level. It was good. So, dude. or not last night, but a couple nights ago. So, yeah. so high level, and it got it just got me thinking about uh, like Alex Pereira in the mm-hmm. UFC. It got me thinking about Izzy in the UFC and the transition that they've been able to make, and the solid foundation that they built through kickboxing that they were yeah. able to carry into mixed martial arts. So, and it got me thinking, like, man, what if Urso was an MMA? I know. <laughs> Like, what, what would that look like? You know, and people were like, oh, no, but the takedowns. And it's like, well, look at it. Potato's a champ, two divisions. So, yeah. <laughs> Izzy, Izzy was reigning champ for quite some time. You yeah. know, uh, their defense is, uh, they're striking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, it, I was super impressed with how technical these two fighters were, but I still edged it out to Nicholas. Yeah. I, I had uh, rounds one and two for, uh, uh, Nicholas with a 10 8 second round, rounds three, four, and five for Irsil, which is a draw. Which, because of the knockdown and one, that's going to edge to the to the side of whoever gets the knockout or the knockdown in a draw and one is going to get the uh, the win. Um, so I, I agree with that. Uh, Blunderbub says, Let let them grab in kickboxing for knees, please. Olivier Goss doesn't need to yell that much during fights. Give the guy a full <laughs> no clinching, no clinching. Like, <laughs> so many oh, times, so good, dude. Knee once. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a one stable kickboxing is Olivia yelling no clinching. Um we can actually um uh, we can show a little bit of this one, huh? Um this was uh this one here. And look at that with the belt. This is a big upset, man. The real yeah. big upset. Yeah, yeah. Uh and, and it was fun, dude. Uh so here's the this is round one. So here's some of the leg kicks from Nicholas, dude. Like they're very good. I yeah. think that's edged them. Every time uh, Irsa would plant, he'd hit him with that leg. Look at this leg kicks, dude. Yeah. This dude, was a and, great and then fight. His, uh, his follow-up after the leg kicks. Yeah. Good right hand there from Irsa. I mean, just Irsa oh, just yeah, man. keeps forward, dude. Shout out one, by the way, for uh, letting us uh, show these clips. Yeah. 100%. Nice right hand there. This is the second round. Luby this is where Irsa... Look started this. turning it on a little bit, but that cost yeah. him. Yep. And he got dropped. He started feeling himself a little bit, huh? A little bit too much. Because you see the shots really looping there and just yeah. stepping forward. Yeah, it's going to happen. And, le- and leaning forward, right? Chin out in front a little bit. Yep. Uh, oh, that flying knee. Also, shout out Olivier Cost. They did Friday fights the night before this. Uh, this was the morning over there in Thailand. Um, Dude, these shots that Yersa was landing in the later part of this fight are crazy. I mean, look at these guys trading. Yeah, it's what a fun fight, man. Oh, look at that. It's like six-punch combination from Yersa. Anonymous says, I prefer one's kickboxing over Muay Thai lately because the speed and te- uh, technicality involved compared to Florence Muay Thai. I can see that. I get that. Yeah. Everyone's... You want- Sometimes you want that craziness of the four ounce Muay Thai, but sometimes you do want to see some surgical fight like this. I mean, look at the way these guys are working. Did you see that combination? The right hook gets him covered up, and then he throws the knee up top from Irsul. Like, Beautiful. it's just good stuff, dude. Oh, big uppercut there from Irsul. I mean, just a fun fight. It, it was a very good fight. Uh, we got a new champion, and that's always fun. Uh, I think they probably do a rematch. Uh, yeah, yeah, shout out. Right. Uh, my mom says Koss had two hours of sleep. That's what I was talking about, but the fight distracted me. They had Friday fights <laughs> that night in Thailand. The next morning, they have uh, one fight night 21, which we're covering now uh, because it's geared towards the American time slot. Dom Lau, Olivier Koss, the one crew, they're all in like two hours of sleep. And it's like, all right. Savages. And you're going to go ref like five of the 10 fights? <laughs> you're on two hours of sleep, dude? It's crazy, man. That's brutal. Hey, you know what they need to do? They need to pull my boy Chris Tanyoni no, into one dude. to help out with some of these no. events. It would be fantastic. 
Can you imagine the level of entertainment? We'd have more things to talk about every single day. That's true. We would. Uh, <laughs> we do have the scorecards. Um, oh, let's see. From this fight. I think, uh, Rich, if you have that slide handy. Uh, there it is. Look at that. Uh, let's see. Shane Byrne gave rounds one, two, and five to Nicholas uh, with the 10-8. Uh, three and four to Irsel. So that's 48-46 in favor of Nicholas. But then Ricky Sewell, shout out Ricky Sewell, uh, Richard Robinson both had the same scorecards. Um, you know, the draw with the uh, yeah. first round of Nicholas, second round 10-8, and then Irsel the rest. Uh, so I can see a draw for sure. Is it, I think this a draw was the good card, was the, the best card in my opinion. Uh, yeah. But because of the knockdown on a draw, that's the closest the fight got to finished. Give it to the boy, Nicholas. Um, very good, dude. Very hey, so good. uh I see here uh Blunderbuff says, didn't he get kicked in the chest on Friday fights too? He did. Sure did. Uh also, <laughs> I'm pretty I sure he got headbutted as well. Oh, really? I didn't catch he that. He did. Uh I saw fight? it against uh who was it? No, 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 no. I made a note of it. We'll talk about it later. That's brutal, dude. But I saw him get uh Peerage in the Peerage okay. fight. Okay, that Smith was a dirty fight. He got headbutted, dude. And so I was going to say for you, Will, since you have contacts throughout the one realm, uh, okay. if you can ask Olivier, right, uh, did he sleep backstage? I think that was a good question there. Uh, somebody <laughs> asked it on here. Uh, two, how bad did the uh, kick to the chest actually hurt? Because I did see him afterwards when the bell so, rang. He kind of like tried to rub yeah, it off yeah. a little bit. And three, was that an actual headbutt uh, in the smith Purich fight, please? Oh, yeah, I'll see what he says. <laughs> that's crazy. Let, let, let me know what he says because I'm very curious. Putting his body uh, Anonymous the is one that said, I wonder if he, if he slept backstage. He had to have, right? No. Nah, he just back. knocked back a couple of Red Bulls. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, Austin says, uh, I've actually caught the live stream. Hey, shout out to Austin. Way, Red Bull, bro, come on. That's for <laughs> stopping Red Bull, dude. Let's go. Okay. Let's go, dude. All right. Uh, Austin says, uh, I was shocked Alexis won. I gave him, uh, but I gave him at least three rounds with the knockdown being a 10 8. I think it's fair. Yeah, I think he, he he did enough. This was a good, I think it was a good call. Very good fight. I hope they do it again because I could watch these guys fight for a million rounds. So much fun. Very entertaining fight. Very entertaining fight. All right. Yeah. One move on to the next one. Yes. Uh, was it Rotolo versus Michelle? Yes. Ty Rotolo versus Isaac Michelle. Okay. What the fuck? This is crazy. Um, we're doing it backwards. So the hype of this one was compounded because of what had happened earlier in the card. Um, but first off, in this fight, such cool transition. There was a switch that Tyra Cholo hit that it looked like there's no way he's pulling this off. And he did. And he got... Actually, uh, I think we have... Uh, the one where he lands in Mount? Yeah. I mean, just oh incredible, God. dude. So impressive. Uh, Let's see. I have a clip here. Dude, the thing is that you see these transitions from Rotolo. Uh, and you see... Oh, here it is. Look at this. Oh, my Beautiful. God, dude. At this level, to, to be able to do that? To dig a switch that deep, dude? Look at him scoot at his that. left leg under right here. Ready? Right there. Woo. Wow. And that's what allows him to get that anchor right to get the leverage to pull him over. But that and is high level, over. dude. Super impressive, man. But That's the thing awesome. is that with these switches, the uh, transitions, he makes them look so easy. Yeah. And, and we know it's not, right? But that, that's yeah, just no. how good Ty is, man. <laughs> and look, we're going to spoil something later. But Cade Rotolo fought earlier, and he got an arm in rear naked choke. They call it, they're like, I don't know what to call it. We'll call it the Rotolo team. I like it. I saw some people online that were like, they didn't invent that. That's already happened before. Bralia Sima versus Marcelo Garcia, 2009. He got him with it. Yeah, fine. Cool. But the brothers both hit it in the same night. It's their thing now. When's the last time that happened? Yeah. Did Bralia Sima's brother get it later on that same event? No. No. Uh, But look, it's like the Von Flew choke. Yeah, it's a Von Flew choke. But then OSP got like 10 of them. And everyone's like, it's the uh, OSP choke now. Whatever. Right? Look, you can see him when he took the back. And he pulls Isaac's head, like wrist up to to get the armpit exposed so that he could then fish his, his hook under to get the arm in uh, rear naked. It's like they literally 
he was like, my brother got this. I'm going to also get this. You could see him force it. And sometimes, look, anybody whose roles has known, you see something on YouTube and you're like, before class, you watch it again. You're like, I could hit this. No one's going to expect this. I could hit this a week. <laughs> and then you try it, right? You try it in the class and then it never works. And you're like, hey, why aren't they doing the thing that they need to do? So that I <laughs> And you're like, damn it. It never works. Yeah. It worked. He forced a submission and it and it worked. That's crazy. And, but you also hear like some of the best grapplers in the world that say like like a Gordon, for example, where he says like, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I go in and I say – I'm going to win by rear naked choke this time. Yeah, you have a plan. I mean, hey, I'm going to go in there right? and I'm going to win by a guillotine. Mm-hmm. Like, no, like he just says, like, this time I'm going to try to win by this. And he's doing yeah. it at extremely high levels, right? Yeah. Uh, the highest. For Ty to be going in here at one championship fight and say, like, yeah, I'm, I want to land the exact same thing my brother did. Yeah. That's and you crazy, know, this, dude. this wasn't like a game plan. Like, I've worked the setups for this submission leading up to this match this is what i'm going to this match with. this was hey an hour ago my brother got this super cool submission i'm gonna try to do it too that's crazy dude <laughs> that's for nuts. sure anonymous saying i was mad about there being two grappling matches on this card but the twins actually delivered two entertaining matches their opponents seemed decent too it was fun i uh i was talking to uh nick atkin was like hey i think he's like i might catch some flack for this but i actually liked fight night 21 more than friday fights 58 and I was like, I think it's because of these grappling matches this time, because they were sprinkled in in throughout. It's a nice change of pace, and and they were really both of them were really good, cool transitions, cool submissions, and it just kind of like the flow of the event is different with this. And sometimes you get a stall match, right? RDR versus um, uh, who did RDR have a match against? Um, damn it, I can't remember. Um, he had a grappling match, uh, and was it a tie? I don't remember. But it was just stalling, right? They couldn't take each other down. It just was, really wasn't much happening. And sometimes that can kind of drag the event. Um, so it's like a double-edged sword. You're either going to get like kind of a stalemate match where not a lot happens. There's no submission, no real threats. And that can kind of put a damper on the card. But then sometimes you get these awesome... It was Ty. Thank you, Genevieve. Um, and But sometimes you get these awesome grappling matches where there's cool transitions. It's exciting. You get a submission halfway through the round. And that's like a whole nother level to a card where you have Muay Thai, MMA, kickboxing... You get a cool grappling match to, to to fit in between some of those, dude. It's it's awesome because sometimes you get a crazy barn burner, and then you go to the next crazy barn burner, and all of a sudden that next one isn't like, yeah, it, it isn't as crazy anymore. It loses you know, it its sparkle been. because you just saw it. Another yeah. one just like it. Yeah, exactly. So you get a cool grappling match, which is still exciting and fun, but in a different way, and it really sets up that next banger to be considered a banger, right? For sure, fun stuff, dude. Uh, Genevieve stuff. says uh, Ty has such a technical style compared to Cade, but they're both so great to watch. Yeah, Cade's hey. a wild one, huh? Oh, dude, so wild, but I love it. Yeah. Um, more fun to watch than Mikey Musumeci. Their style is definitely, I think, right. Uh, Mike, Mikey is very Mikey's interesting. Mikey's my boy, and- dude. His Instagram, one of the best pages, dude. Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Austin I was says, watching. I... No, go ahead. I was just saying, I was watching both uh, the Rotolo brothers last night. And I was like, I, I would much rather watch Rotolo brothers uh, grapple than Mikey, uh, just yeah. because they they make their their fight so exciting. They, they and especially uh, Cade so aggressive in his approach, which yeah. I mean we'll talk about later, right? But yeah, yeah. Austin says I still think these two are going to get pieced up in MMA though. I'm not sold on their wrestling. LOL. If they spent a few years in Thailand training their stand up though. They could be a problem, and we will definitely talk about that because. Cade has a fight confirmed, an MMA fight confirmed. So we'll talk about that in a bit later. But I know what you mean. But yes, we can move on. Ty got a bonus for this, yeah. by the way. Good for him, man. Yeah, they always get Good bonuses for him. every time they every time they get, All right. they get a bonus. <laughs> uh, we're gonna start skipping some fights again for the sake of time. It's already twelve. We're an hour in. Uh, we're gonna talk about Ben Tynan versus Duke Didier. Look, Ben Tynan. I've been a fan. I was watching. I I was watching him in LFA, and at that time, I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. He's just kind of on the card. I didn't really know much about him, but he had some fun fights. He he lands that big punch because he because his takedown. He's a, he's a wrestler, obviously, but he lands that big punch, and that sets up his takedown entries. And I was like, this guy's pretty good. And then one signed him when he's like four and zero, and I was like, what the hell? This is crazy. Um, yeah, Genevieve says the jorts. He rocking the jorts at the weigh in, but then he had the blue shoe. <laughs> jean short like fight shorts fantastic 
uh, the tuxedo, tuxedo muscle shirt again, uh, just like we like our Jesus. Um, <laughs> it's just formal, but also I like to party. Uh, yeah, exactly. But watching him in LFA and then seeing him develop, and now he's in one, he's had two fights in one, uh, back-to-back wins. This guy is one to watch, man. And not just that, he's my boy because he's got the scene haircut, you know. That that was uh the the emo phase was uh was close to me in middle school, right? Uh he's a skater. I was a skater. He's he's you know, he's got a Pokemon tattoo. That's my boy, right? Bulbasaur, <laughs> not Charmander, but whatever. It's all good, I'll let it slide. So I'm like, dude, this guy, I like him for his fights, I like him for his personality. He's one of the boys. Uh I'm down with this guy all the time. Then <laughs> He comes out yesterday, and he, this is this was like the one I was watching for the most, to be honest. Um, just because the guy's so entertaining, mm-hmm. uh, he posts he he does the one takeover uh, on uh, Instagram, and they're doing the photo shoot, and he's like turned, sticking his ass out, and like looking back over it with the hair flip, and like t- taking photos like that. I'm like, this guy's so fucking funny, great, dude. dude. Just Hilarious. so funny. Uh, anonymous is Ben Tynan looks like everyone's first created fighter in WWE game when they were a kid. It's so true. It's perfect. But he kind of has that WWE energy right on the mic, but it's not like abrasive. It's just like yeah. fun. It's just fun. It's not shit talking. It's just fun. It's just a good time. Um, and the thing is, you need this in MMA. You need these type of personalities in MMA. You do. You yeah. know, like, and it's not that he's going in there and being disrespectful or anything, but he's colorful, That's the man. Key. He's going out there and he's standing out. Yeah, he's a personality. That's the key, though. He's not disrespectful. Um, <laughs> Jimmy says, what a goober. Uh, so the fight, the actual fight itself, Duke Didier comes in, immediately shoots on him. And you're like, wait, I thought Ben was the wrestler. He gets that single leg, uh, gets him up against the cage or the, the ropes. Uh, look at those Look at those jorts. Um, <laughs> these shorts are so good, dude. Um, yeah, so I said one needs these personalities, and I think they realize they're leaning into him heavily now. He's only had five yeah. professional fights, and they're leaning into him this heavy. Um, fishes for the guillotine, goes down, uh, and then uses the guillotine to get the bu- the butterfly guard. Uses the butterfly guard to push Didier away. Uh, something that Toasty mentioned that last episode. When you have someone in a guillotine or a position like this, um, they are trying to pull their head out right of the choke. So you have them in the guillotine, your arms around their head, they're pulling out, and you can use that push uh, to then use your butterfly guard to push with him. And as soon as you let go of the choke, they snap back. You use that momentum with your push on your legs from the butterfly guard, and that creates the opening. Because it's very hard, Mm. especially at heavyweight, to use butterfly hooks to push someone off of you. Yes. Right. But that coupled with the guillotine and them already pulling away from you really helps. Um, He uses that to get up. Uh, Didier tries to go for the back body lock. Ben Tynan hits a switch, uh, just like Ty Rotolo. A little bit more of a traditional switch there. Um, and they get up, and they start swinging. Ben Tynan throws that left straight, dude, that cracks him. Because uh, it's the same entry, right? He can faint his yep. takedown, faint his shot, faint the left straight. It looks the same. That left straight lands. Didier's kind of wobbled, and you're like, oh, no. He walks him up against the ropes and clinches him, hits him with a cheeky elbow, and you're like, that's nice work. And then... He hits him with another elbow, and you're like, "Holy shit, dude!" Uh, he goes down. He hits some uh, some hammer fists. Um, I think we have, uh, yeah. And then it's just basically just uh, a beat down from there. Um, and then we can watch it. Nice. Damn, there's the elbow. Boom. Big shots. From yeah, right here I was like, oh, no, Andrew. no. Keep the ground and pound. But no, he's just flanning him out. And he's like, there we go. Yeah, I mean, just nasty. Dude, that elbow. That elbow was so nasty. Yeah. It was a nice setup, too, man. There. Yeah. And uh, right we have Anonymous saying Tynan versus Malikin in USA. That would be nice. Look at this elbow. <laughs> Oh I mean, that God. is nasty, dude. <laughs> he, like, jumps into it almost. Yeah, that is a nasty elbow, dude. Fucking awesome. Well, Great work. Uh, yeah. And then he rips the shirt off. <laughs> he rips the shirt off at the end. Those are so the good. crowd. Nick, Nick Atkin catches it in the crowd. How about that? Gets assigned by him after the fight. <laughs> look at awesome. look, Dude, go back. Look at Herb Dean. Hey, eyes up here, Herb Dean, okay? Eyes up, Herb Dean. <laughs> 
Don't look at him it's like a piece of meat. It's, it's a George. It is. Oh, All right, oh, man. Uh, yeah, they've been they've been having like uh, social media posts of him and uh, Malikin, and Malikin was cage side because his boy was fighting on the card. Um, look, let's hold our horses here. No disrespect to Ben Tynan, but he's had five professional fights. I know he was, he was active on the amateur scene. I don't want to see Malikin versus Ben yet. Not yet. Um, and I know he was saying he's like, he's a middleweight. There's no middleweight in the world that could beat me. Well, you know, just, like, yeah. I know, I know, enough. I know. But it, <laughs> I was like, ooh, that's tough. Look, I think you do, you do, um, you do the rematch with Ali Akbari, maybe. You do Rug Rug, maybe. I think Ben needs at least one more fight before before fighting uh, Malikin. Um, and that one more fight should absolutely, to Ganskow's point, be in Denver. He's Canadian, but he's at Team Elevation with uh, Curtis Blade, Zach Pauga, all those guys. So, look, it's April. Uh, we got September. Make it happen. Book him for Denver. It's a it's a easy decision. Easy decision. Find anybody for him to fight. Not Malikin. Um <laughs> Tiny versus anybody else in Denver is amazing. Uh, Jamie yeah. says, I think Tiny would get his ass handed to him if he went up against Malikin. It's just too early, man. I think the wrestling would cancel each other out, if anything. And Malikin's a berserker on the feet. I just don't think he's ready. Yeah. Don't think he's For ready. For sure. He's still young in this game, dude. Five professional fights. Five and no. Malikin's a three-division champion. That's There's a difference there. Tynan does have the jorts that gives him the like extra five power. Add, yeah. And yeah. A, lot, a lot more range of motion. If you're an always that sunny fan, uh, <laughs> look how low I can get. And just... <laughs> All right, man. You want to move on? We have two more uh, fights to cover uh, on this card. Yeah, let's move on. God damn. So long All right. <laughs> Jacob Smith versus Dennis Purich. What a Dennis, Bosnian fight. menace. What a nickname. Yeah. Uh, these dudes. Every once in a while, look, fighting is they're, they're fighting, right? It's a fight. Every time it's a fight, but it's also a sport. And sometimes it's it's you know, it's a professional fight. This one turned into a fight fight in the third round. Like yeah. aggressive, like fuck you. This is a fight. This is not a sport anymore. I'm trying to beat that ass. Like, this was a gnarly fight, dude. <laughs> it was so much fun to watch, dude. And uh, they both had their moments, the crazy leg kicks. Uh, Purich, when he uh, he catches the leg kick from uh, from Smith, picks him up and tosses oh, him. Oh yeah, and, and no, and then Smith <laughs> Smith like gets up and he smiles and he's like, "That was fun," you know? Like, yeah, it was and a then full just on keep on going at it. Down, oh my, is this it right here? Just picks him up, <laughs> just throws and him down. <laughs> look, he, look, he smiles, dude. He stands up and smiles and comes right back at him. Dude, this was a vicious fight, man. These guys were throwing at each other. What a fun fight this was. And there's a sweep from Smith back. Um, but that third round, dude. Well, the end of, I think it was the end of the second, right? Where Purish lands an uppercut off of a kick that he he cost, Look, called it a knockdown. That right there. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah. Purish kept on doing this. Where he, when he was going to go through and reset, Turning away. he turned his back and take a couple steps and, steps and then turn back and try to reset. And yeah. Smith then was like, nah, you ain't doing that to me, dude. So every time no. he'd like turn his back, he'd rush him, boom, boom, and try to throw a yeah. couple of shots. Dude, this fight was so entertaining. Yeah, it was a firefight, dude. And the knockdown, the first knockdown came in the second round. I, I think it was Smith threw a kick, so he was like off balance. And I don't know if the uppercut really should have been scored a knockdown right there. Ooh. Right? Because yep. if we CSI it, Let's see. this was called a knockdown. It's okay. on the armpit. And he slips. You can see yeah. it slip. They call it a knockdown, which from the vantage point of Olivier, I'm not gets him on the chin. I'm not mad at. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. It, it's it should not have been a knockdown. And you can see Smith protested immediately because he didn't even get his head touched. And he's like, no. He's like, no, no, no. But then because of that, he comes in reckless and then actually yes. gets dropped. <laughs> exactly. And that's what I was going to say, right? Because he doesn't get dropped for real the second uh, drop. But yep. he probably doesn't rush in like that if he doesn't feel like I have to end this round exactly. trying to knock him down. Because now it's he needs a finish. Because he got dropped in that second round, he needs a finish. And that third round was pure aggression from Smith, dude. And Purich yeah. was exhausted and was like, dude, please let me. And he kept 
veteran moves, right? Like you said, turning away and slowly getting back up, knowing he's up. Um, I mean... Oh, kill Smith him all just, the time. Smith was a terminator this round, dude. Look at him charging in with that knee to the body, that uppercut, the kick, right hand. Like, I mean, just a terminator. And here's the big elbow. elbow. to the back of the head. <laughs> dude, that's brutal. But he's turning around. Um, and and Olivier did a good job. He had his hands full in this one. Um, but he kept turning he around, it. right? And, and Smith was complaining. He was like, dude, he keeps turning around. And then here's the thrust. Bam. Boom. Little, little thrusty thrust. This is when it was turning into like an actual fight. Yeah, he's like, dude, this guy keeps turning around. I'm down. I need to finish. He needs to fight so that I can get the finish. And he's flopping and slowly getting up. And he's the clock's ticking. And I need this. Like, what? And you could see the frustration, dude. And it was. Uh, uh, Austin says, yeah. I get it though. From Olivier's perspective, it totally looks like that uppercut dropped him. Uh, if this if this was five rounds, though, I think Smith would have beat the brakes off him. Yeah, because the tide was turning that third round, dude. The aggression Wonder, from Smith was nasty. Wonder, the crowd did not like the thrust. They ain't about no, those thrusts do in Thailand. You don't do that. You do yeah, not right do that. away, he was like, so, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm turning around. <laughs> That's the heat of battle right there, dude. Uh, Anonymous says Smith was getting pissed at the fake knockdowns. The actual knockdown and Purich, uh turning around all the time. Dude was going nuclear. Yeah, he was... <laughs> Furious, dude. All right, here too, especially. He's like, dude, come on. <laughs> yeah, but it's one of those in the third round where I was saying that uh, Olivier got headbutted. Oh, I, right there. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. That was it right there. Because Smith tries dude. to like, oh, twist yeah, he does. Courage, and he gets him right on the chin. Right. Boom. Oh. Right there. Yeah, that's nasty, huh? Yeah. You got to ask him about that, man. That was Not only brutal. did he only get two hours of sleep that day, but he got beat up. Dude, he gets kicked in the chest by Shadow, goes to bed for two hours, and then gets headbutted. From pure <laughs> That's <itch>. brutal, dude. <laughs> rough, brutal. rough night. Oh, uh, but man. very fun fight. Yes. I guess very fun. At least he didn't resort to biting out of frustration. True. Very good. Very good. Very true. We've seen it happen. <laughs> Our standards have moved yeah <laughs> pure, pure post fight interview was fantastic though i'll give him that the dude was hyped it was a fun post fight interview and then you see the respect despite the the bad blood and the heat of that fight because that fight had some heat on it no, uh, dude, at the end of the day they're, they're fight. fighting man they know yeah they know all right we'll move on to the last fight that we're going to cover from uh this event it was Cade rotolo versus francisco lo dude we, I mean, we kind of already talked about it, right? So we'll be quick on this one. But Cade's aggression and his transitions are so fun, dude. Because he's one of those guys, like, like Mikey doesn't want to be on top. You know, Mikey wants to be on the bottom so he can attack these leg locks, things like that, roll to things. Um, the Rotola brothers can be on top or bottom. They have very cool setups, uh, you know, where they give up uh, underhooks and half guards. They can hit their dars, things like that. But then they also work off their back. But the back take from Cade, there was a point where Lowe, I think, kind of rolled away to get it to get distance and get and stand up. Mm -hmm. But Kay just sprints at him and jumps across the ring, dude, and takes his back. It was so cool. It was so cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah and I mean, part of this too, Francisco going into this saying, Hey, not only am I gonna beat Cade, but then I'm gonna go after Ty as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, so he's talking all this trash going in there. Uh, he starts off with the flying triangle attempt on Cade. Yeah. Uh, cool. <laughs> so we're like, what's going on here? Uh, and also, dude, Herb Dean, great job mm -hmm. in these jujitsu matches, man. He's been good. He's been really good, you know? But yes, to your point, when he tries to roll out of it and Cade, uh-uh. He's like, you ain't getting yeah. away from me that easy. Actually, let me let me show it really quick. Because um, the there was no picture of it and the motion really does justice. Because the fact that he could do it so wildly and still maintain control on it yes. and not lose the position, you know? Uh, and it's going to be quick here as soon as I click this. Bam. And the back, the hooks go in. Like, I mean, look at that roll, dude. Have you ever seen, like, when... Um, there it is. That's awesome, man. Look at that. Yeah, so cool. Like, when an anaconda catches, like, large prey... And like mm. that praise like starts trying to spin everywhere, but the anaconda just keeps on getting tighter and tighter as it's spinning. Yeah. That's what that looked like. Yeah. Like 100%. he latches onto him, <laughs> Lo tries to spin out, and like he just ends up even tighter. 
in yeah. a cage grip. You know, it's just beautiful to watch, man. These guys are so much fun. Yeah, they really are. How sick! I really like those rash guards too. The one that Lowe's wearing is so sick, dude. No, yeah. the one that Lowe's got on. Oh, okay, got it. The black dude, with, with all your contacts. Angle. Tell them to send you one, bro. I don't even roll anymore, dude. What am I gonna do with that? I don't know. Put it. It's been so long. Put it behind you. Put it up somewhere. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all right man that was it for uh fight night 21 fun event uh to your point uh this really uh pushed one over the top when it comes to being out uh all the other organizations for the weekend right yeah hey real quick 100 100k for the bros dude both of them both get 50k oh, that's sick dude that's it bros take home hundred thousand dollars on top of their paycheck very cool awesome awesome and they're so grateful too man they seem so humble dude so they humble really do. They're like, we said took it a time and time again, like, you guys are changing our lives, you know? Yeah. Uh, so much fun. Dude, Kate, Kate took a picture with me when he was walking out in Denver. We were, like, front row, not on the floor seats, but, like, the front row of the whatever, right? And the, the exit lane was, like, right there for all the fighters to leave. But Kate oh, walks yeah. by, and I was like, oh, what's up? And he's like, oh, what's up? All cool and stuff, just trying to get to his seat. Cool ass He's guy. like, you want to roll? And you're like, nah, you don't roll no more. I don't do that anymore. But if you give me the match, <laughs> <laughs> all right all right man let's move on to friday fight it's been dude we're getting uh delirious here we're, we're deep in here oh, oh we yeah got so we got bonuses. Yeah, we got, k and ty <laughs> both get the bonus 100k for the boys ben tynan gets one obviously um because dude for the, the guys the guy is uh the jorts get a bonus Oh, yeah, real quick. Oh, to awesome. point, I still think they'd get Thanks the monster MMA us, by yeah. high level wrestlers. Their aggression can easily backfire in an MMA match. Uh, I think they'd adapt better uh, than some dog like Mikey, though. Look, Cade has a grappling or uh, an MMA match, I think, at 167 in June. Um, they gave him somebody who's 2 0. It's a good entry point. It honestly might be a little bit much uh, for your debut, uh, but who knows? I, I just hope, I know they've been working with guys. You know, they've got some working with Haggerty. They've been working with strikers. But I hope it's not just – we've seen this so many times where jiu-jitsu players, Mackenzie Dern, Damian Maya. Damian Maya had a great success, but it's still the same point. Um, a lot of these jiu-jitsu people who are so good at jiu-jitsu, Brian Ortega is one of them, and they develop striking. They get Bangkok ready, and they think, I got my grappling situated. I got my striking situated now. But they don't address the wrestling. And it's like – yep. Incock ready works against someone who's low level, but once you get to somebody who's like an actual striker who can mm. defend a takedown, those body lock trips, those jujitsu takedowns are just not going to work at the highest level. Dance Cal says Ryan Hall wrestling. too. Ryan Hall as well. I hope they develop some real wrestling, dude. Real wrestling because the striking, the striking needs to get good enough where they can at least make you um, aware, or need to be aware of it, right? Hit them with something quick, yeah. and they're like, okay, I need to respect it a little bit at least. Then you can set up your takedowns and get to where you need to go because they're so aggressive right now. But it's because they're in their they're they're in the ocean, dude. They're they're, they're just, in their yeah, they're, they're they're fine there. They can swim there. I don't think they're going to be that aggressive in MMA. I would hope not uh, because they're out of their element there. Um, and you maybe see might see some aggression once they go to the mat, but they have to get it to the mat, and that's going to be the key. If the striking needs to develop, yeah, but the wrestling I think is even more important. Um, because you see, how many how many terrible strikers have you seen who are wrestlers continually win fights just because they can get it to the mat? They don't have yep. to worry about their striking. I would much rather see them develop wrestling. Ground and pound is easier. Yeah, get their striking decent. It doesn't have to be Bangkok ready. It just needs to be yeah. respectable. Um, we'll see. All right. All right. But I'm excited. Uh, I like them. Yeah, same. Same. Yeah. I, I really don't want to see Mikey Musumeci. I know he's been talking about possibly stepping in. I was like, please don't do that, dude. I don't want to say I'd be heartbroken. Much. Yeah, neither do I. Neither do I. Hey, All right. Shut up, Gansko. Respect. Uh, moving on to Friday fights. Who doggy. Yeah. And we will not be able to show – we'll have pictures, but we will not be able to show footage from the pay-per-view portion of this card. Um, yes. But we That's will have no plenty doubt. of uh, pictures. Uh, we had Superbomb versus Gregorian, though. Three. All right. Superbomb versus Gr Gregorian, three. Uh, first, fi first fight, Gregorian knocks him out, right? Second fight is a master class from Superbond. Also, Superbond with the fade. Coming in with the fade. Ah, yeah, dude. Okay. I respect yeah, that. Huh? Uh, but, yeah, second fight was the master class by uh, Superbond. Um, 
so they do the rematch. This is for the interim belt because Chingiz Alzov is trying to get out of his contract. Um, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> but wish he's fought both these guys, right? But dude, the second fight. One thing that I love in fights, especially in rematches, is seeing all right, who won the first fight? How did the loser of that fight adapt their game to address what happened and why they lost? Right? First fight, Gregorian knocks them out. Second fight, Super Bowl is just push kick, push kick, push kick, keeping his distance so he can land that big left cook, uh, left kick. And it was great adjustments from Super Bowl. And because Marat is just a forward pressure guy, right? He always is. Um, he just walks you down, walks you down. So if you can just keep teeping him, keep push kicking him, he has to reset every time. And he, he wants to close the distance and you can't if you're just getting front kick to the body over and over and over again. Um, and Superman needs that distance so he can throw those left roundhouse kicks, whether it's from the, the switch kick or the from the southpaw stance. He's so good with his left kick, but you need range to do that. Not Well, it's not always. Superman has thrown it in real tight spaces. But... Um, so he's like, what is Gregorian going to do to negate that? And you see early, Superbon try to throw those push kicks, those teeps, and Gregorian's just sidestepping him and closing the distance, going forehead to forehead with Superbon, crowding him, crowding him, crowding him. And I love that. And he starts finding, because when they're, like, this is a perfect picture. They go forehead to forehead. Superbon's up like this uh, to, to watch the hooks, right? Because those tight hooks. And so Gregorian's just uppercut heavy this fight really cool work from gregorian to walk him down crowd the kicks uppercut but then there's the adjustment from superbone if we can go back one picture rich is it the step and knee oh my god dude over and over mm -hmm. and over again big scoring big scoring there um, yep because look you want to someone who's forward pressure like that you want to intercept them whether it be your jab your cross the front kick to the body, all those things are very good weapons against someone who's walking onto you because they're adding they're adding damage to those impacts, right? Because it's like a car crash. If you hit a brick wall, uh, it's good, but, well, it's bad, right? If you hit a brick wall. Yeah. But <laughs> if you hit another car who's moving towards you, it extrapolates, right? It's exponential. So if someone's walking onto your front kick or your teep or your, your uh, jab or something like that, it adds damage to that strike. But if they're crowding you and you can't get the teep, you can't get that front kick, the next closest thing is that knee. And dude, Marat just kept walking into that knee, dude. I don't I don't know what his body's made of. Uh dude was getting speared with that knee. That was awesome. Yeah. What a good read by Super Bowl. Yeah, it, for me, it was a step and knee from Super Bowl. And it was also the ability for Gregorian to land his hands every single time that they would disengage. Right. So there would yeah. be a step yeah. and knee. There'd be some of that dirty boxing you were talking about, but as soon as they nope. separate nope. and disengage, boom, boom, right? Yeah. Uh, two quick hooks. So he did a really good job with that. But uh, yeah, it was a fun fight, man. I don't have much to say about it. You, you covered most of it. Yeah, I mean, it, it was fun. Uh, eventually, um, uh, oh, the body work from Gregorian was cool in the clinch too. I mean, look at these pictures, dude. The one photo, the photography team for one is so goddamn good. Um, but I really liked later on in the fight, Gregorian was slowing down probably because of these, the body. And it did let Superbone start throwing that left high kick, the left body kick. There was a couple times where he got it to the liver. Um, and, and that's what you want to see from Superbone. You want to see him at distance. Oh, look at these knees, dude. Um, but here's the picture right here of the high kick that I want to talk about. I just watched um, uh, who posted it. I wanted to give them a shout out. Um, but there's this girl on YouTube that posts a lot of like Muay Thai videos, right? And she just had, um, oh, here it is. Uh, Sylvie Von Douglas, Douglas E2 Muay Thai. Very good channel. She just posted a video with uh, Jean-Charles Skobowski. Um, People who aren't familiar with one or something like that, they might know him. Well, he didn't fight for one or anything, but if they're not super familiar with like Muay Thai names. He was famous in America, at least, because on Ultimate Fighter, GSP versus Koscheck. Remember when they were like, yeah, GSP brought this Muay Thai guy in who's like a French dude and he showed up drunk and he's just schooling everybody. Do you remember that one episode where he, they show up and he there's just this dude, this French dude. They're like, yeah, he's no. drunk or whatever. And he's just sweeping everybody. And they're like, what the fuck is this guy? That's John Charles. Very good. <laughs> but That's if you awesome. watch this video, it's like an hour and a half dude on YouTube. It's very, very good. And he's just talking about these things that are so simple, but it's not something that you pick up on. Right. And this picture was a perfect example of it where he talks about, if I throw my high kick, um, 
I'm not aiming over your shoulder to try to hit you in the top of the head, especially early. Um, I'm trying to throw it uh, to a hey, Gansko says the drunk French dude. I love, I love that episode. Yeah, classic. Um, he also allegedly wasn't really drunk. He was just on vacation in Vegas and had a couple of martinis. And allegedly. they were like, come on. And he was like, yeah, I'll come on. He wasn't like drunk, drunk, but he had a couple of drinks. Um, That's hilarious. Allegedly. Uh, so That's what John Jones said. Yeah, yeah. I was at a birthday party. Um, <laughs> so, but he talks about how if you throw that body kick, right, a lot of times people want to block it here, right? They turn their side, forearms, cover their body. They catch it. And from there, you're in a position. If you look at my hands right now, and I'm blocking to the side, that right hand is cocked. It's ready to counter off the kick. I take the kick. I block it. Bam. I can throw my right hand. But in this position here, he's like, you want to kick the, the wrists. You don't want to kiss, kick the gloves because it's big cushion, right? But if you kick him in the wrists, that, that part of the glove will protect your shin, right? You won't hurt your foot. You won't hurt your shin kicking that wrist, uh, the wristband of the glove. But what it does is it crosses up their hands. It'll make their hands cross up. He's in no position to counter here off the kick. Look at Gregorian's hands here. And it's crazy because I, I just watched this video a couple days before this uh, this fight, and you see it immediately, dude, immediately from Superbone. It's like the... It's these little things. It's like you might just think he's yeah. throwing a high kick, but dude, he's aiming. He's aiming for this. It's it's fucking it's nice work, dude. It's really cool because it, it also knock him off balance. Um, if you kick him that high, but but uh, they're you're gonna knock him off balance. They can't counter, but also their hands are crossed up. They can't even they can't throw a punch off of that. Easy money. Yeah, that's a good breakdown. It's cool. Well, video it's cool video. Was? And there's the one right right below the the elbow to the liver. Um. Yeah, if you just look up uh, Jean Charles Skobowski on YouTube, it's like an hour and a half. Um, really good, good stuff. But Super Brown gets the decision. Uh, he gets the interim belt. They're like, "Who do you want to fight next? Do you want to fight Chingiz Alizov uh, or Tawan Shai?" And he's like, "Both." Um, but here's <laughs> the uh, here's the scorecards all over the place. You know, all three judges gave it to Super Bowl, but the rounds yeah. were just it was close, man. It was really close. Yeah. Good fight, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else to cover on that fight? No, that's it. I know we're an hour and a half in. <laughs> All right. We had uh, Nongo versus Kulab Dam. Going into this fight, everybody was like, stop giving Nongo these killers. Please. Please. Because, you know, Haggerty dispatches him, right? Um, and then who did he just uh, – he just fought uh, – why do I not remember? Um, he fought Haggerty. He lost his belt. Oh, Nico Carrillo. And Nico Carrillo is a giant, and he, he big power puncher, and he knocks him out. And then they give him Kulab Dam, the left meteorite, and everyone's like, "Stop, please stop! I don't want to see Nago get knocked out three times in a row." And Nago is like, "Dude, spare your tears, spare, <laughs> spare your worries." Uh. Slow round one from Nongo, right? Kulab Dam was very aggressive that first round. Um, but then I remember I put it in the chat in the Discord chat. It's like, dude, round ones are basically they don't even matter in Muay Thai. And round two starts, and Nongo starts throwing that right kick to the body. Dude, he basically was just like, because look, if you're trying to throw your left hand and you're just spamming right kicks either to the arm or to the body because the opening will be there when he's trying to throw his left. You could land it to the body. But even if you're blocking it, if you just spam those right kicks to that left hand, that left arm, that's going to take away that weapon. And if your name is the left meteorite and all of a sudden you don't have that left meteorite, yeah, what, what's the move? You know, It was perfect from Nongo. I love seeing him get back on this. Anonymous says, I was nice. one of them who thought this was going to be a live execution of Nongo. <laughs> Great performance from Nago. Gritted this one out, dude. Takes loses the first round, takes it off maybe, and then just goes to work, dude. Fun performance. Look at that through the guard. And yeah, of course that sets up pictures. the sets up the hands. It's good stuff, man. Well, Shout there we Nongo. go, man. Uh, anything else on that fight? No, nah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right, and then we'll move on to uh, Sexon versus Asahi. This is where you, you don't spare your tears. This is where the tears are warranted. <laughs> Look, I am not familiar with Asahi. I'm not. Um, I think his non Muay Thai background really, really worked for him in this fight. Mm. Um, and Sexon, look, 
Setson's up there. He's got some mileage on him. He's had a great career resurgence. You could watch him versus Superlek on YouTube from pre one days. Uh, really fun fight, but you could tell Superlek's on another level. But it's a very fun fight. And Sexon was kind of that like middling guy, similar to like a um, a Robbie Lawler arc uh, a little bit, where he was always in he was always game, but never really quite next level. And then had a career research. It's like almost like RDA, right? To put it into UFC terms, he didn't become a champ or anything in in one, but um, Sexon has had this c- career resurgence with one where he just went on a streak, right? Like five wins or something like that, getting bonuses uh, on Friday fights. And this time it caught up to him, I think, a little bit. You know, he's got some mileage on him. And I saw he's this young kid with just very cool, very cool in and out movement. Sexon was just not able to get to him, you know? The cool in and out movement, game. the lateral movement, man. Uh, the way that he bobbed and weaved as he moved laterally, you know, and was yeah. able to attack off that. Uh, he was very sneaky with some of his attacks. Dude, I was really sneaky. impressed by Asahi. Yeah, and, and he, he didn't fight like a traditional Muay Thai style, and I think that really gave sex on problems. It really did. Uh, Rich in the chat saying, Asahi super dry is his preferred pitcher of Japanese beer. Whoa. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it says man of culture. <laughs> uh, the, uh, what was it, crescent cook kick? Crescent kick, hook kick uh, from us oh, yeah. later. Oh, beautiful. So good. beautiful. Um, yeah, he just, I mean, if we're being real, this was a showcase for Asahi and and he styled on him a little bit in this fight. And it sucks to see your for boy sure. get styled on, but it happens. And, and if you're going to bring somebody in like an Asahi, right, and you want his name to start building up right off the bat. Yeah. Sexon's a good person to put him up against. Yeah, and Austin says, as I say, he was styling on him. Austin says, yo, this Japanese dude was styling on Sexon. Good for him. Uh, after Chadri called out Japanese fighters for losing in one, we've gotten a huge flood of fighters from there. He's one of the few to shine 100%. And look, I've seen some people say that the um, those comments from Chadri were kind of misconstrued and he should have picked his words more carefully but it was almost like a call to like it was meant as like a call to arms because he said he's like look japanese fighters come to one they get crushed uh and as everyone's like damn dude what the hell you're like trying to build that market and i think he just i don't think he's i think it was like a hey guys come prove yourselves type message but it is just worded poorly i think a poor word choice mm. uh came off as disrespectful for a lot of people but um but yeah i'll say he is uh one to watch for sure i like his style all right we'll not move familiar on with his game we also had a uh, hair versus shadow this was from yeah we're skipping um uh mong tai versus neck rob even though that was a banger they both got a bonus um but I, I, it sucks to see Mong Tai lose again. And then we're skipping uh, Kong Thorani, uh Got a one contract that was also a banger. But we're an hour and a half into this episode. Um, so we will go to Shadow versus Eric here. Look, Shadow, Roger uh stadium champion, World Series winner, signs with one. Very anticipated signing. Um, Eric Hare, one debut. Uh, Shadow debuts in one and he loses his debut. And everyone's like, what? This guy was supposed to be like the next big thing. Mm. They book him against Eric Hare and everyone's like, oh, they want him to get back on track. No one really has heard of Eric Hare. Not, no disrespect or anything like that. Uh, a lot of people going into this fight thought he was kind of like a sacrificial lamb to get Shadow on track in one. And instead, dude came in, let the hands go. This guy's fucking awesome, Eric Hare. Yeah, the double jab in the beginning the from Hare over and Ooh, over again that was overhand, money. Right? He dropped him with the overhand right, huh? The step and hook to the gut. The step and hook to the gut was yeah. His body shots were very good. Um, very good. But Shadow, what Shadow did well um, is when you have a big puncher like this. Look at these shots, dude. Uh, when you have a big puncher like this, uh, one of the best weapons, and you saw it with Super Lake versus Takeru, is that inside leg kick, which in MMA you never see it. Um, the inside leg kick with your lead leg. People say, "Oh, you don't have enough power. It's not really worth it." It can completely disrupt that overhand right from a, from a big puncher because they need to step in with their left leg to throw that big right hand. And if you're just kicking it out, it doesn't have to be debilitating, but it's it's if you can consistently do it and time it with their overhand right, it can leave you open for the overhand right if you don't time it well, right? Because you're on one leg now to eat the punch. Um, mm. But if you're stepping in, you're like, oh, I'm going to step in, dig in with that lead leg 
and throw the big right hand and all of a sudden it gets smacked and it gets taken out from under you that right hand just falls and you fall and you have to get back up and it's exhausting and it can add weird injuries because you're tweaking it constantly uh you're off balance uh it's not a good look for the judges like it's a very good weapon against a big puncher and shadow used it expertly um and he eventually um dropped him with it i believe right uh or he dropped him with a right elbow at the end of the first round i think um but i was very impressed with how game um uh eric was um we can see the end of the first round here here's a shoulder roll from shadow that he uses to wind up his right elbow for the knockdown because uh, he turns to his left to get behind his lead shoulder right there and he throws the elbow it drops him um and i was like oh man here's the beginning of the end right oh fantastic sure. fantastic refing by olivier in this one by the way and to your point ramiro he did the hands up he yeah did the hands up a lot of times they're <laughs> like all right show me your hands and they're just like no and then they let it go anyways eric was up there um but look at the way he shoulder rolls gets behind his left lead shoulder um uh, let's see nice jab there there's a jab yep really good jab and there's the right setting a lot there. of things up with the jab oh yeah he rolls with the left shoulder to cock back that right elbow and then bam comes back around beautiful it. yeah i don't know why it's uh buffering now um but oh we lost it um I think it's right here bam yeah right on the chin too at, at first it looks like it misses and there's an over the shoulder shot here bam and bam right on the chin and that drops him yeah and that was a rough one too right because you don't really see it from that first angle very much like mm -hmm. whether he got clipped super hard but then the way that he stayed down on all fours just staring down for a while it's like oh must really rock him yeah and and then they keep going and right here i think it's coming up soon a right hand and there's the kick out the lead leg shadow does it so well his kicks are so good that's his best weapon by far there's a big right hand but eric was there for it man this dude's game as hell uh awesome by the way said the best part of these fights is when a hurt fighter rallies and this is exactly it right here right yeah. you see him bouncing their back off the rope and they just come back swinging him. even harder so good i mean that right hand is money dude oh it's because it's a live stream i think live streams are act weird uh, but there's again, you get his, your lead leg kicked out trying to throw your right hand. But there's extended combination gets him the right hand, and Shadow goes down. It's a knockdown. His hand goes down, right? Um, he gets the count, but Shadow's like, "Oh shit!" Now it's like a real. I knocked him down at the end of the first, but now it's like a real fight. I got to take this real seriously, and he goes to work with these kicks, man. And if you're Eric, this is like, all right, I heard him. It's time yeah. for me to go, you know. I'm the guy here that, you know, everybody's not supposed to, uh, I'm not supposed to win this. And I just dropped him. Blunderbub, yeah, fantastic point. Uh, very good shorts from Fairtex there. Um, <laughs> I just noticed that right now and I will never unsee it. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks exactly. Uh, but dude, the inside leg kick from Shadow, there it is again. The way he times that with the right hand from Eric is so good. Um, and then now he's just swinging a baseball bat out at the top of his head over and over and over again there's the inside leg kick again and there's a big shot that hurts eric he wobbles but he's still there and he turns him into the corner now he's throwing yeah but you could see him still on wobbly legs yeah i mean he's 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 fighting back but he's in it right now he's in the fire oh nice uppercut uppercut. From shadow then big right hand to left body. hook uh, up very man. well for shadow dude nice tomahawk elbow from eric there nice right hand from eric oh, those kicks dude like how did his arms feel after this fight huh blocking all these kicks cannot be good oh, oh. And there's a low shot and even this dude i respect the way eric handled this nut shot dude i respect yeah. the hell out of this guy you made me a fan in this fight. Sometimes, you know, in a, in a loss, you can gain new fans. And this is one of those. Um, 
we'll skip forward. Because uh, I do want to see the finish. I know we're late in this game. We only got one fight to cover after this, right? Big right hand there that right. drops him. I thought that was it. I was like, this has got to be it. The way he went down, he's on a knee. Yeah, and when he stood back up, I was like, oh, he might be able to make it out of the round because there's only yes. about 10 seconds left. And hands up. 15 seconds. Let's go. Shout Look at Olivier the sitting right there. Yeah, and Eric's trading Weird. back, man. He's that body that kick. like more than 10 seconds, dude. And there's the kick to the chest from Olivier, dude. Oh, he gets kicked in the chest there by Shadow, just full force. Bam. Boom. He's like, ow. <laughs> <laughs> He's still rowing. Oh, oh poor Olivier, dude. Oh, man. That's brutal, dude. Uh, let's see the knockdown there. It was a big knockdown. There's the right hand that wobbled him the first time. Here's the right hand. Bam. Punches right through him. Completely takes his legs out. There's the knockdown from Eric. So they even it out, right? They both got a knockdown that round. Bam. Very good stuff there. Uh, and we'll skip forward just a little bit. But it was cool to see Eric, like, you could see him gain the respect of Shadow in this fight, you know? Like, very cool to see. There's that awesome. instant the way that he said Shadow. the punch up with those two kicks to the head first was great. Yeah. I mean, Shadow's a master, dude. A step and elbow from Shadow. There's that inside leg kick again, takes him out. And you know, like, those aren't like debilitating shots. It's just disrupting your game. It's, you know, getting someone out of position is like half the battle. Nice spinning elbow attempt from Eric there. Misses a high kick. Damn, there's the high kick from Shadow. That hurts him. Kicks him again to knock him down. Just brutal, dude. The double high kick. One to wobble you, one to drop you. Uh, and they call it off. Yeah. A fantastic stoppage from, from Cost. He's holding him up in the corner. Hair pretty much like collapsed into his arms after he saw that he stopped it. Oh, yeah. Once he's like, oh, are you going to hold on? Okay, thank you. Because <laughs> I did not want to stand on my own there. Crazy. Um, and then let's see the replay real quick. Have you noticed live streams do this a lot? They, like, buffer differently than, like, videos. Oh, look at that high kick, dude. That's the one that hurts him. But he stays up. The heart of Eric Hare, dude. And then, bam, there's another one. Right on like the temple, dude. I mean, that's brutal. And then, uh, let's see. Shadow got the uh, the double bonus. Or, uh, yeah, double bonus. Got 700,000 bot. Nice. Good for him, man. Uh, Want to move on to the last one? Uh, Yeah, I know. I, we're almost two hours into this episode. Uh, Peacock versus Shinjo. Uh, yeah, we'll talk quickly about this one. Obviously, Peacock is one to watch. Uh, anybody who knows anything about him uh, knows why. And if they didn't, they know why now just from that picture. Um, but Peacock's been killing it on the scene, dude. On the Muay Thai scene. This guy's a savage. Um, yes, he is. Uh, he only has half an arm. His right arm ends just past the elbow. Um, but don't let that stop you. Huh? He's like, I love him, dude, because like after the like, post fight and stuff, he's always like, he's like, I don't care what excuses you have. Like, clearly, I have plenty of things I could bitch about uh, and use as an excuse, but I refuse to. And look what I've accomplished because of that. And dude, this was a masterclass from Peacock. I mean, he just beat the brakes off of Shinjo. Uh, and I saw some people say like, oh, yeah, Shinjo, no one really knows who he is and stuff. It's like, dude, he still has two arms. So, like, what the fuck? Uh, and Peacock's out there just battering him. His high kicks, dude, are so good. His step back high kick. What did you think? Is this the first time you've seen Peacock fight? Uh, yeah, first time I saw him fight. I love the fact that he switched stances regularly. He would attack with the straight left uh, from southpaw position. Then he'd go orthodox jab and then, like, throw a hook with the left 
And then, like, he, he just was constantly switching stances. So even though he only has one arm, he was giving different looks all the time with yeah. his hand, uh, which that was can help really you, right? impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. almost have to do that. But, yeah. no, I, I it's super impressed. It, I mean, especially considering dudes coming in with arm and a half. You know what that, I mean? dude. Uh, uh, when he's first walking in, you're, you're just wondering to yourself, because this is my first time watching him. And yeah. like w- when I first noticed, I was like, how many weapons does he have? Like, or is he going to go in unarmed? You yeah. Know? Hey. Um, hey but after watching, did you got to give the guy a hand? <laughs> uh, Austin says, bro, his kicks and elbows are nasty. The way he can loop his elbow into clinch situations where fighters would normally just grab onto his arm to block is so satisfying. A hundred percent. Because a lot of times you can just frame off. And like I'll try to throw an elbow or like something, and you'll catch my forearm or something. There is no forearm, so the elbow goes through. And he, it's just his ability to throw that elbow in, in those in those positions is very cool. And you could tell fighters just don't expect to get hit with something there, you know. Uh, yep. And he does a very good job of keeping it up here, so that left hook doesn't come and crack him. A lot of guys have to fight like this or like this. He can just put his whole arm up. It's probably not as heavy, right? Um, he can just keep that whole arm up in the way. Very cool, dude. Gansko said Nick Newell was pretty good at striking too. Mm. Nick Newell was solid. Um, yeah. But we saw what happened when he fought someone like Justin Gaethje. Uh, and it was like, oh, shit. This is where... I remember watching that fight and I was like, why? Why are we doing this? I don't want to watch this. Uh, that was old school World Series of Fighting Days before it was a PFL on Axis TV. Uh, <laughs> on Kruk, Michael Chavello. That was fun times. Um, but yeah, just... I mean, look at this picture, dude. How cool is this picture? But fun fight. Shout out to Peacock. This was his one debut. Um, he's been making some noise uh, on the MMA scene or the Muay Thai scene before this. Uh, and he fucking killed it, dude. It's just a complete showcase hat. masterclass. Yeah. Love the cowboy hat. All Love right. Hat. We made it. That's all the fights we're covering. That was it. That's Shout a long out, one, uh, An hour and four. Austin, time. Blunderbub, Gans Cow, Genevieve, of course. Anonymous. Uh, Colleen Anonymous. Uh, who else did I miss? Anybody? I think that's it. This episode, yeah, that might be it. Yeah, uh, but it's always fun whenever everybody joins us live so we can chat, uh, MMA, chat about the fights. Uh, if you haven't yet, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, goes a long way. Well, we got uh, one we more try thing to get to talk about still. Oh, snaps, what and and Rich has put it on screen already. 1168 returned to Denver. Uh, one is coming back to the United States. Um, mm. They're coming back to the United States. They got uh, Zhang Jinan versus uh, Stamp for the uh, main event. Stamp is going up a weight class to challenge for the belt. Uh, we got Haggerty versus Superlek. Are you kidding me? Uh, that's going to be insane. And then uh, more big stuff to come on that card. Um, uh, Gansko says, who's all going to Denver? I think we all are. I think we all are. Um, and if you're not, maybe this will get you hyped. Whoops. Maybe. Maybe. Last year, we made history. The biggest moment in the history of one championship. The world's largest martial arts organization arrived in the U.S. Welcome to the United States. Superstars were born. in this Denver crowd. Legends cemented their legacies. You guys want me to keep on fighting? This September, the world's best are back. 1168 Denver, live on Prime Video. Bro, come on, dude. Come on. Like Ganska says, who's going to be there? He says he will be there. Uh, the QR code that's on the screen right now, if you scan that, it'll take you to the presale. Uh, visit.1fc.com slash 1168 presale. Uh, if you sign up for that, you can get tickets early. I think 20% off on tickets too. April 10th is when the presale goes live. Uh, so jump on that if you're planning on going. And if you weren't planning on going and you just watched that trailer, you probably are now. Definitely, <laughs> definitely recommend going. We went to, uh, you know, uh, the first time they went to Denver back in May of last year, and it was fucking insane. That clip they show of Rod Tang jumping into the crowd and the crowd's chanting Rod Tang, he got the knockout over uh, Edgar Juarez Tabarez, and he leaves, and then he comes back later, and when he walks through the tunnel, the whole crowd's like, Rod Tang? And then it starts chanting Rod Tang again, and he's jumping in the crowd. It's like, 
This is people in America, dude, watching a Muay Thai fighter chant. It was crazy to see, dude. It was so cool. Um, but for sure, jump on that pre-sale. Get the tickets 20% off. Obviously, you'll be also have a, a, a earlier pick on uh, like where to sit and shit like that. So, yeah, dude, I, I highly recommend. We're all going. It's going to be sick. You can catch up with us out there, too. Uh, yeah, that'd be awesome, man. If we actually did like a, an SOF meetup, you know what I mean? Get a lot of... Uh, Come on listeners and everybody together and whether it's you know at the event we just take a picture together or something it'd be yeah, pretty cool though dude it'd be so much fun um, yeah. But yeah for sure jump on that uh and then next week what are we covering the big one huh? hey everybody Ramiro and will here thank you so much for watching that short clip it's just a small clip of what we covered this last sunday yeah if you want to check out the full fight card recap uh the link is in the description and it's going to be on screen at the end here. Uh, and don't forget to go back and watch our fighter interviews that we have. Uh, and don't forget to tune in live every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and you can join in on the fun. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. It goes a long way. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching that short clip from Story of the Fight.